Good morning, Twin Cities. You're waking up with the Fox 9 Morning News. All this week, we've been promoting our special Girls in Science event, which is tomorrow, and the Science Museum of Minnesota is hosting the event. But our next guest proves there are no limits to how far women and girls can go in the sciences, and Alex is here with more on that. Alex. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, this morning, yes, we are joined by Dr. Diane Jorkaski. And Dr. Jorkaski is a vice president and also the head of worldwide clinical trials at Pfizer Pharmaceutical. Uh, now, here's a little bit about your background. Uh, you received an undergraduate degree uh, at the College of Worcester in Ohio. Also, mm -hmm. she graduated from the medical school at the University of Pennsylvania. But today, she's here to talk about the Girls in Science event that's tomorrow at the Science Museum. And Dr. Jorkaski, nice to have you here. Thank you. Good morning, Alex. All right, let's talk about your decision to get into the field of science and, uh, and, and medicine. Uh, where did that come from? Because you, your, your parents are not doctors. Your mother was a homemaker. You said your father was an accountant. Was an accountant. Where, where did, was your inspiration coming well, from? Well, my grandmother came over at, and had no more than a sixth grade education. She came from Poland. But she was very, very uh, insistent that uh, I would be educated as her granddaughter. And she was the one who, from the youngest age I can remember, wanted me to go into medicine and become a doctor. And I was intrigued by medicine. I wanted, always wanted to understand how things worked. So I loved the science, I loved chemistry, and then I really like people. So it was just a natural fit to take the science of the chemistry and, and put it into medicine, and I became a kidney specialist. Let's talk about where the science was, for instance, several decades ago in, in teaching girls about science and, and uh, where we are today. We're obviously doing a better job today, but uh, we still have some work to do as far as uh, the schools and just community in general. Parents out there, everybody's got to really talk to girls about the kind of great careers that they spawn from science. Absolutely. When I started, for example, I was a, a sort of a fish out of water. I was one of the few women to be a chemistry major and then I went on to become a, uh, a physician and in medical school I was, I was only one of 15 percent of a class that were women. Today over more than 50 percent of the class are women and I'm delighted to see that. But we don't see that necessarily in other sciences. Part of the problem is is that it all starts in the home. If the parents don't encourage Courage the the girls to go into science and make it make them realize that this is a good thing to do and there's a tremendous career opportunity it won't help if the schools in any way uh, suggest that this is not for girls or that there's something that this is only for boys then they're diminishing the capabilities of the girls to go to their full potential I think as you get older and you go into colleges and so forth that's a becomes a whole different peculiar situation because if there are if they continue to be all male classes you have to be a, a pretty resilient woman to, to make it through, but it is a challenge, but nonetheless, it is changing dramatically. I think it all starts with the girl, too. She has to have the desire, and she mm -hmm. has to have the vision to want to do something different and be prepared to go through it. But I will tell you, it is tremendous careers. To make one medicine, for example, takes some neighborhood of over 24 different disciplines in science alone, all working together collaborative, collaboratively to make that medicine. Uh, let's uh, talk about what you're going to be doing this weekend at the event. This is pretty cool. Girls are actually going to be extracting DNA. Yes, yes. Now, everybody thinks that DNA came from, was founded by Watson and Crick, and, and that there were two, two fellows who got the Nobel Prize. But in fact, DNA was founded by a woman, a woman by the name of Dr. Rosalind Franklin. She actually identified the DNA. Of Watson and Crick actually worked on the model. And so it's kind of cool to know that the whole aspect of life started because of a woman's uh, science and her, so her inquisitiveness to try to understand uh, where these, these things came from. And, and it has made such a difference in science over the last 50 years. It is, it is astonishing. And so we're going to do some neato experiments tomorrow where we're going to actually extract DNA from green peas. Yes, green peas. Green peas. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to talk to the girls about what it takes to go into science and how much fun it is and how, you know, science in, in nowadays is like playing field hockey. Everybody has to work together. Everybody does. I was in my daughter's first grade class just this past weekend. We were working on science experiments with rocks and silt and, and the girls got their hands dirty. I made sure that I was, you know, talking to the girls uh, just as, uh, you know, explaining to them, get your hands dirty. It's important. Absolutely. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Jorkaski. Have a good time. Thank you. At this uh, weekend's event. We hope that there's a good turnout uh, for, of course, Girls in Science Big Event here. Thank you. Night. Girls, come on down. We're going to have a great time. Come on down. As you heard, <laughs> it is tomorrow. It is from 10 to 2 at the Science Museum of Minnesota. And uh, lots of, as you just heard, interactive experiments. Uh, exhibitors will be there to get the girls and all kids interested in science. Viewers can register for the event and get more details on myfox9.com. Tom.